Well, that took some extreme kludging. Um, <laughs> the reason we're not seeing uh, or hearing any clicks is there's no neutrons. We're not in that range. And we've learned something interesting. And Bill, if you're listening, we need another little 24 uh, volt supply for the, uh, the user control box. That's why the valves wouldn't work. Um, didn't really see much difference um, with gas in it. Just gas, and really no difference. Um, when I run at the pressure that we normally ran at, which is about indicated two or so times 10 to the minus 2 millibars, um, nothing really phase changed or the tune didn't change. It's almost as, as if things didn't get loaded, except the output of the Faraday probe went hugely negative like it normally does when we use a DC uh, ion source. Now I'm running at a little bit more, start to walk with the camera. Five times 10 to the minus two millibars. And by pulling around the scope, which I can zoom in so you can see, we have this rather interesting set of waveforms. Um, zoom in some, and sorry about this. Like I said, this is totally off the cuff. Okay. Uh, we have fewer kilovolts because we got a load on this thing and it's, it was being stepped up by what amounts to a series tuned circuit. Um, the yellow probe, the yellow trace is the Faraday probe. Now, it has this funny shape now <laughs> that we've seen before in the recirculation video, kind of. And as I tune it around a little bit, resonance is basically in the same place. This is I tune it around a little bit. The DC level from this high from this thing is changing quite a bit with frequency, even though the actual measured uh, AC voltage, which is now about three kilovolts per feet on the uh, on the grid itself, is um, not changing very much. But that's also gone to this sort of one thirds, two thirds thing of rectification. We're, we're coupling it through a capacitor about 750 plus. And um, just tuning around a little bit, we get this. So I did, I'm still not seeing any phase shift, and I think I should. So maybe maybe my thinking is wrong or something. I don't know. But let's go to X, Y, and see if I see anything. Oh, look at that. OK, so tuning around. <laughs> oh, it went off. And, okay, so by going too far off resonance, what happened is um, the thing went out. It's unlit now. Let me go over and push the button to turn the DC on. Wait a second. I should change things radically. Maybe off again. And there we are again. Okay, uh, this thing, all these things are like once lit, they stay lit. But if, once you let them go out, they're harder to get lit again. So. Okay, that's kind of in phase, but obviously the um, the wave shapes aren't the same, so we get this funny looking message, uh, which is cool that we can do this stuff now with these new modern scopes and with these old school tube type things that put out watts <laughs> of a single generator. Flip that back to the regular mode. Okay, so I'm not sure what this all means yet. I, I think I should be seeing some time delay. Um, between the grid drive signal, which is blue, and the um, what I see in the Faraday probe, and maybe the Faraday probe is a little later. No, let's see if we can. Okay, let's see if we can measure this. Like I said, this is science in action, guys. <laughs> Pleasing. I got a measurement. Let's, let's get it really good. Okay. Blue trace is a drive. Yellow trace is what I see some inches away. And we're at 50 nanoseconds per div, and we have a 48 or so nanosecond delay between the positive peak of our signal and what looks like positive ions flying by the Faraday probe some inches away. Cool! This is what we want. This is real science. This is data. Now, in terms of volts peak to peak, we're driving this thing with it. Looks like it's going 
Oh, about, so you have about three kilovolts, maybe, is that what I was saying? Yeah, because we're 100 volts per dip, per dip it's really um, about 10 times that. Not quite 10 times that, actually. It's, it's set, the scope is set for 500 volts per dip, but the divider is really 450, and I have a 10 inch probe that's not accounted for, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so. Um, I have a 10x probe on the 450x probe, but the scope camp doesn't have a scale range for it. It's about one third positive, which is about one kilovolt positive. And then that capacitor, which I'll sort of point to, I guess, one way a minute. It's not in the picture anymore. Let me um, get back in the picture. This capacitor right here at the end of the uh, feed through is a 750 pump cap that we're coupling through. Um, so that's why we can have some DC offset. So basically what happens if for whatever reason we turn off, uh, you're going to see this yellow trace uh, go somewhere else entirely. Uh, let me just turn the amplitude down until it goes out. It goes negative and negative and negative and bam, it's gone. And now it's down there. Which Position control, scope position control, and its center line is this yellow thing which you probably can't see very well. And as we turn the volume up again, I don't think we can make it come on. Just by that, I'll have to go over and put a kick it in the butt with a little bit of DC. Boom, that happened. And now, suddenly, instead of our deeply net negative closet that we normally have, we have one. It's deeply positive. The zero for this thing is way the hell down here. By the way, the yellow trace is 100 millivolts per division. That's kind of an arbitrary unit. It's sort of gets it on the screen. Um, so compared to our normal, what is it, about four or five bits peak to peak, we're about how far off from that are we? Okay. So now the center of this is exactly at the bottom of the scope. So we'll one, two, three, four. Without its own size, DC offset, kind of roughly speaking, and we now have a measurable time delay. Try that on X and Y, and you see the same thing. Because duh, doesn't matter what the time scale is for that. It's, it's its own time scale. Okay. So I got that. That's at I don't know how many volts exactly. It's less than the starter rate, but I can calculate. It's about three kV peak to peak. Call it. And we're pushing ions around. We're actually getting them to go back and forth and stuff. And at 3 kV, we're not doing it hard enough to make them have fusion. We probably have the wrong geometry and everything else in the world. Uh, the grid is actually lighting up under this AC drive. And I'll get you another screenshot here on my other part of the kludge. This is, like I say, part, pardon the crappy video. This is a totally, totally, um, off the cuff lash up. So I'm sitting here with this laptop on my wood stove and then another fuser control computer over there and the fuser over here. Neon bulbs and all. And we're not using this big pretty coil up here. We're using this little tiny one down there, which I will tell you the micro Henry's about 1.71 megahertz with uh, measured 80-something puffs on the fuser, so you can calculate it if you're able to mind to. And we're getting this really weird, cool waveform. So, I'll think about this data and calculate some numbers and try to get the actual voltages and so on accurate so we can see if the transit time should change with voltage. Oh, wait a minute, we can test that now. I can turn the voltage down a little bit without it going away. Let me get this back on. Green, which is oh, I suck as a cameraman. Okay. But hey, this is science, it's not engineering. I do that too, but it's a different, different thing. Okay, so let's get this spread out to where we can really see the time. It's two divs at 25 nanoseconds, not quite two divs. Okay, so let's turn the volume down. You would expect, no way, 
<laughs> you would expect the time delay to become longer as you turn the volume down. Because of the slower ions and all that stuff. But I think because of the way I'm doing triggering, uh, the blue thing is moving ever so slightly to the left as I turn the volume down. That's making it look like the delay is actually going the wrong way. Uh, let's go back to uh, that's why. And now I'm just capturing some raw data for us to all analyze together, I suppose. And it went off and boom, we're back in phase. So, a little off the cuff data gathering to just sort of kind of see what page the whole world is on, and uh, we'll uh, continue our work now that I've got some numbers to crunch. Thanks. <laughs>